الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ و سلم علی نبی محمد و علی آلہ و صحبہ و سلم مبعد فرسٹ آف آل آئی وڈ لائک تو تھینک اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی فر دی بلیسنگ آف اسلام and the greatness of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam which is the greatest blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could bestow upon the Muslim. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us, forgive us, and grant us success, beneficial knowledge, understanding, and assist us in practicing in a manner that pleases Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this series of lectures, I will discuss the importance of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the status of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu Majma'in, and highlight some of the creed of the Shia sect, the Shia Rafidah, which contradict the orthodox understanding of Islam, as was revealed by Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to His Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and practiced and understood by the pious predecessors. I'd like to thank our brothers at Wisal uh, Channel for putting this program together and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with success in this life as well as the hereafter. And I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and depend upon Him and ask for His guidance in this matter and ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide and assist the Muslims everywhere with the correct understanding uh, by the pious predecessors who were the ones who preserved this ummah and this nation min fadli Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Imam Barbahari rahimahullah ta'ala a 4th century scholar known for his knowledge and his piety said know that Islam is the sunnah and the sunnah is Islam and that one is not independent of the other this statement illustrates for us how the early scholars viewed the concept of the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and that the sunnah included everything in Islam from revelation to all the actions, statements, and practices of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. In addition, Islam and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are one and inseparable. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabihi al-kareem, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَاهَكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتُهُ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيلُ الْعِقَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, And whatsoever the messenger giveth you, take it. And whatsoever he has forbidden, abstain from it. And keep your duty to Allah. Verily, Allah is stern in reprisal. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here highlights for us that we have to adhere to the commandments of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Follow his authentic sunnah, that which has been authenticated, we follow. Whatever he has commanded, we, we do. Whatever he has forbidden, we refrain from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also in the Qur'an, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاعْتَبُونِي يَحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبُكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غُفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ قُلْ عَطِيُّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُ فَإِن تُوَلُّ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this ayah, He says, Say, O Muhammad, to mankind, if ye love Allah, or if you love Allah, follow me. Allah will love you and forgive you of your sins. Allah is oft forgiving, merciful. Say, obey Allah and the Messenger. But if they turn away, verily Allah loveth not the disbelievers. So here in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has showed us that there's a relationship 
with rejecting the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and kufr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one said, verily Allah loveth not the dis disbelievers. Those people who reject the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, those who reject the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to follow hi uh, him and his messenger alayhi salatu wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَعْطِيُوا اللَّهَ وَأَعْطِيُوا رَسُولَ وَلَا تَوَلُّوا عَنْهُ عَنْهُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَسْمَعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse, O ye who believe, O ye, ye who believe, obey Allah and His Messenger and turn not away from Him when you hear Him speak. Be not as those who say we hear and they hear not. Verily the worst of beasts in Allah's sight are the deaf, the dumb, who have no sense. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah al-azim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse has let us know again. Ya ayu aladheena amanu atiyu allaha wa rasooluh. Wa rasooluh. O you who believe, obey Allah and obey, his, uh, the, and obey the messenger and turn not away from him when you hear him speak. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us know that the worst of beasts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them as beasts. Those people who disbelieve and who are deaf dumb, even when they hear the verses, that they reject the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the shahid, this is the purpose of mentioning this verse, is it shows us that those people who reject the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they're rejecting the, the uh, commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described them as deaf and dumb, as if they were beasts. Allah described them as beasts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them as dawab, as beasts. Subhanallah. So this shows us it is imperative for us to fear Allah and practice what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has ordered us to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions uh, in, in, in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَسْتَجِيبُ لِلَّهِ وَلِرَسُولِي إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ لِمَا يُحْيِيكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ O ye who believe, obey Allah and the Messenger when He calleth you to that which hastens you. So the Qur'an is the perfect speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's filled with verses ordering the believers to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandments and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion is perfect and complete. And the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his sunnah is straight and is the best guidance. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes clear for us that his religion is perfect, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala subhanahu fi kitabi al-kareem, الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَدَيْتَ لَكُمْ إِسْلَامَ دِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, He says, This day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you and chosen Islam for your religion. This is in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he says about this particular verse, Allah informed his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the believers that he has completed iman for them and that they will never require an increase. And Allah has perfected it and, will never, and it will never be decreased. And he is pleased with it and will never be dissatisfied with it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has completed iman for us, completed uh, Islam for us. Islam is perfect, it doesn't require taking from it. It doesn't require any decrease. It doesn't require any increase. There's no new forms of ibadah. There's no new path to Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made that path clear for us. The Surat al mustaqim And the Prophet sallallahu was the living example sallallahu alayhi wa on how to get to, to Jannah. He... he um, he described for us that path. He illustrated that path. He lived that path as Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha described the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said he was, you know, when they asked about his, his manners, she said radiallahu ta'ala anha that he, it, it was like he was the, the, it was like the living Qur'an. 
The Prophet Sallallahu illustrated and, 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 and practiced the Qur'an perfectly and was the perfect example of manners and the perfect uh, example on how to get to paradise. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The scholars, they clarify that whenever you hear Iman or Islam in a text, for example, in the Qur'an or in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whenever you hear them, uh, then it includes both meanings of Islam and Iman. Meaning that if you hear the term Islam in, in an ayat, or Iman in an ayat, or in a, a text of the, the Sunnah, of the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu then it, it includes both meanings, Islam and Iman. And when they are mentioned together in the same text, then their meaning, they take a separate di uh, meanings. For example, if you have a text and it mentions Iman and it mentions uh, Islam, then if they're mentioned together in the same text, then their meanings, they take those specific meanings. Iman refers to faith and Islam refers to the religion of Islam in general. So in the statement of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, where he mentioned that the perfect, he mentioned the perfection and the completeness of Iman. This is in reference to Islam. Because in the verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al Yom Akmaltu Lakum Dinakum wa Tamamtum Alaikum Ni'mati Waradaytu Lakum Islam Adina. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the verse Islam being perfect and completed. And so here, then we see uh, Ibn Abbas, when he explained it, he mentioned Iman. So Iman in Islam in this verse, or in the, the text of uh, Ibn Abbas, is referring to the completeness of Islam, that it's perfect. It doesn't require any additions, and it doesn't require subtracting anything from it. The Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that of his companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, clarifies for us what is good the straight path, the way to attain paradise, and their sunnah exposes religious heresy and bid'ah, misguidance and deviation, which all lead to the hellfire, as illustrated in the uh, prophetic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, where the Prophet ﷺ has said, Usikum bi taqwa Allah, wa sam'i wa ta'ah, wa in abdin habashiyan, فَإِنَّكُمْ مَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ فَسَيَّرَىٰ إِخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرًا فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةَ خُلَفَاءَ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَحْدِيِينَ أَدُوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاذِجْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْتَتَرَ الْمُورِ فَإِنَّ كُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالًا As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I advise you to fear Allah and listen and obey the leader. Even if he were an Ethiopian slave, for whosoever amongst you lives after me shall see many differences. Therefore it is upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided uh, khalifat. Hold on to it and bite down upon it with your molar teeth. And beware of newly invented matters. For every invented matter is a bid'ah and every bid'ah is misguidance. This hadith is profound. This hadith contains so much wisdom. This hadith gives us also the prescription for us when we're having problems. Is it not true that the Muslims are having so much difference? That there's so many people calling to different creeds? This one says be a Shia. This one says join this jama'ah. This one says join this group. This one says be hizba fulaniya. Wa'iyadhu billah min dhalika. This group says we are hizba, uh, hizba al-bath. This one says we're hizbullah. Uh, this is what they claim. But we know the real hizbullah. The real hizbullah is not Shia. It's not the Rafid. The real Hezbollah is the one Allah described in the verse. He said, In al Hezbollah, humu muflihun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Verily, the party of God, they are the successful ones. They are the ones who fear Allah. They're the ones who have the correct iman. They're the ones who take from Kitabillah and the Sunnah of the Prophet, وسلم, and they follow the companions of Allah ta'ala anhum. That is who the Hezbollah is. Hezbollah Rahman wa Hezbollah Shaitan. Hezbollah Rahman, meaning the party. Of Allah the Almighty, the uh, Allah the Most Merciful. Where Hizb Shaitan is who? The Hizb Shaitan. Those people who follow the Shaitan. That, that that's who it, Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, uh, Rahimullah Taala. He described for us in his book Al Furqan. Hizb Shaitan, Hizb Allah, Hizb Shaitan. 
that there are two parties. So we want to be, as the Prophet ﷺ prescribed for us, to follow his sunnah. It's upon you, my sunnah, and the sunnah of the rightly guided uh, Khalifat. Who is the rightly guided Khalifat? Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. This is the sunnah that we want to follow. This is the way that we want to get to paradise. And every innovation, as the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, leads astray and it leads to the hellfire. So there's no new uh, ways to worship Allah. Because the innovation we're talking about here, as the scholars uh, uh, described for us and explained to us, is we're talking about the innovation in the religion. Every newly invented matter within the religion is a going astray. There's no bid'ah hasana. There's no bid'ah hasana that's going to... Uh, uh, there's no new way to get closer to Allah. There's no new way. Nothing that isn't founded and perfected. As Allah mentioned in the, in the verse that we mentioned before, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم This day I've perfected for you your religion. The religion's perfect. There's nothing new we can add to the religion. So the innovation here that the Prophet ﷺ is describing that is unpraiseworthy, that is, uh, 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 that is evil, that leads to the hellfire, is the innovation which is regarding the religion of Islam, meaning ibadah, if you were to increase your salat, or you to, to hold a new type of creed, a new type of belief that isn't substantiated by the Qur'an, and isn't substantiated by the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and isn't substantiated by the methodology, the minhaj of the Salaf al-Saleh, the minhaj of who? Of the Sahaba, first and foremost. They're the ras of the jama'ah, they're the main jama'ah, they're the usul of the jama'ah, they're the foundation of the jama'ah. And that's why, it, that's why the scholars, they explain, as the Prophet ﷺ said in another authentic hadith, قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَىٰ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَا تَزَلْ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْ أُمِّتِي ظَاهِرِينَ الْحَقِّ He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, there won't cease to be a group from my ummah that is on the haq, that, that, see, that is always present on the haq. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be from amongst them. That those people are ahl sunnah Those people hold on to the Qur'an. To masak bi kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That's who the ahl sunnah is. That's all we call the people to. That's all we want. That's all we want for ourselves and we want for the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That we leave off innovation. We leave off sectarianism. We leave off the strife and the stress and the evil that comes with it that will take us to the hellfire. How is it that we could curse the Sahaba of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam illustrated for us and praised them all throughout the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised them all throughout the Qur'an. It was narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam drew a line in the dirt. Then said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is the path of Allah. Then he drew a line on the right and the left of it. Then said, these are the various paths. And on every path there is a devil. There's a devil that calls to it. Then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the ayat, وَإِنَّ هَذَا صَرَاتِي مُسْتَقِيمٍ فَاعْتَبِيُوا وَلَا تَعْتَبِيُوا سُبُلْ فَتَفَرَقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ ذَلِكُمْ وَسَاقُمْ بِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited in this authentic hadith, he said, this is my straight path. So follow it. Follow not the other ways, lest ye be parted from my way. This, uh, uh, he has ordained for you that you may ward off evil. Allah has given us the sirat al-mustaqeem. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's chosen path. He chose for the believers. He didn't just create us and leave us wandering astray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with the straight path which is to mesik bi kitab wa sunnah. It's following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's following the Qur'an as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam illustrated in that hadith. And there are amongst the many beliefs, uh, many benefits that we can attain from this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And one of the first ones is that the community would experience differences, as we see. And the splits in sectarianism are not positive. They're not positive attributes that we should be proud of that we have uh, split, but would nevertheless occur. The Prophet ﷺ prophesied that his ummah would split. Also, 
that the prescription is following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions This is the way we can, this is the alaj, this is the medicine for us for the splitting and for the disease that, that will take us to the hellfire. What's the disease? The disease is infighting, is hating one another, is hurting one another, is cursing one another, and is not following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The ummah of Muhammad ﷺ can only unite on tawheed, on the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It can only unite on the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. I'm sorry, there's no other way. I don't know of another way. The scholars don't have another way. They know that it goes back to the Quran and the Sunnah. They know that the prescription comes with the, what the Prophet ﷺ said. That he said, Alaykum bi sunnati. You know, it's upon you my Sunnah. That's it. That's the only prescription. And so, in addition, we also learn that innovation in religious matters is misguidance. And it leads to the hellfire. And that there will be many devils calling to their hizb, their group, calling to their jama'ah, calling to their creed, their sect, and their methodology for interpreting Islam, which contradict the divine guidance and pristine creed that was revealed by Allah and espoused by his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this regard, he said, Salawatu Rabbi wa salamu alayhi. He said, If tarakatil yahud ala ith wa sabayin firqa. Wa if tarakatil nasara ala ith natain wa sabayin firqa. Wa sataftariku hadi umma la tarata wa sabayin firqa. Kullaha fin nara la wahida. Kulna men hiya ya rasulullah. Kala men kana ala mithli. Wama kana alayhi. Alay, alayya wa ashabi. O kama kala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this hadith, a very, very important and profound hadith, which helps us. It can help the heart to know how to deal with these differences that we're experiencing. No one is happy about the differences. No one feels good about their Muslim brother calling to something other than what Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called to. No one feels good about this. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us it would happen. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the Jews would break into 71 sects. And the Christians would break into 72 sects. And my ummah, my nation, would break into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And then the companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they asked, Who are they, ya, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He, sallallahu rabbi wa sallamu alayhi, said, Those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon today. This is an authentic hadith. This shows us that our minhaj, our methodology is following the Prophet ﷺ and following his companions. You can't have Islam without that. You can't have it. The tr if you want to say, you can't say you follow the Qur'an and you don't follow the Sunnah. When the Qur'an says, when Allah says, if you believe in the Qur'an, if you love Allah, then you have to follow the Messenger. As we mentioned in some of the ayats before, Allah says, وَأَعْتِيُوا اللَّهُ وَأَعْتِيُوا رَسُولُ That you have to follow who? You have to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have to follow the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you have to follow the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because they're the ones who, who transmitted this beautiful religion of Islam. And I will end this section of our, our lecture by saying, by mentioning the athar, the statement of uh, Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma who, who said, whoever seeks to practice the sunnah, then adhere to the sunnah of those who died. Those are the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They were the best of this nation, contained the most pious hearts, the deepest knowledge, and were the least tiresome in practicing their obligations. They were a people who Allah chose as companions to His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and convey His religion. Therefore, Follow their mannerisms and their ways, for they were the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam who were on the correct path. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And anything that I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anything that I said was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas, with the bat ala sunnah al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabi and Muhammad. والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم 
رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه وأعد لهم جنات